The papers are here, and of course, you do know that uh, the explosion in Ibadan is still the top, top, top thing. And as you can see from uh, the Daily Times, anguish as massive explosion leaves Ibadan in ruins, tears, blood. And the picture story tells it all. Uh, this is from a drone shot, and you can see the, 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 the scene of the explosion. This is not actually, this picture is not actually the epicenter of the explosion because there's a crater at the epicenter of the explosion. Mm. So the government, look, look, look at the headline on the side now, FG probes possible breakdown of explosive control law as Tinubu commiserates with all your victims. Sad. And now we still go to the outrage uh, trail about an explosion. As Markinde confirms three deaths, and this is from the front page of this Nigeria, 77 injured. Victims recount ordeal as University College Hospital intensifies emergency response. Uh, Tinibu orders security to get perpetrators, and that, that's still some of the ugly scenes from the Ibadan explosion on the front page. With insecurity there, we could take that town hall meeting to kidnappers hotspot. The Daily Asset leads with Ibadan explosion as well, says FEC directs review of laws on explosives appoints Committee on security of Security Agents Ministers. Reps, rep demands total closure, total control of explosives usage by government. And uh, if you go further down, kidnapping. Federal government warns against crowdfunding for victims' ransom. Measure counterproductive. And still talking explosion, first news is coming to you this morning. And it's their first news about an explosion Tinibul Makinde talk tough. President says illegal miners must be fished out, punished as Oyo governor intensifies, or rather identifies foreigners as culprits. And you also want to look at that story there. Uh, well, it says Kanuguba, Sanasi mocks Kandujay, others over Supreme Court's defeat. The Nigerian pilot focuses on Abuja, it says Abuja will be hot for bandits. Federal government vows to make FCT extremely hot for bandits, kidnappers, others. It will no longer be business as usual, says FCT Minister Nyesom Wike. Reveal Sinubu instructed him to provide security agencies all they need to fight insecurity. Says enough is enough. Everything must be done to ensure the security breach doesn't happen again. Leadership is looking at this morning. Uh, they say Dow Trails. January student loan takeoff. Student body says no portal open for applications. Urges President Tinibu before month end. Commencement plan still intact. And that's coming from the federal government. But you also want to look at that electricity subsidy rises to 1.6 trillion now as discos raise tariff. Daily Sun, 2023 presidency. Showing uh, there were plots to annul election. Brands LP vice presidential candidates interview disgraceful, and of course, you see just below the picture story there tension grips plateau as fresh attack claims too. Looks like all is not uh, calm yet on the plateau. All right, let's look at another story there, and you see uh, people's daily still uh, police repel bandits attack on Benway. Community killed two as NSCDC parade six terror suspects in Taraba court bars NBC from further imposing fines on broadcasters. And that's on the front page as well. But cabals uh, have their story bottom page on page five. It would have been interesting to see that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go to The Guardian now. Outrage as if an explosion exposes illegal mining weak regulations. That's on page six. And of course, um, you will see the riders there, families of uh, crowdfunding. Let, let's go to families of abducted persons appeal to Tinobu, marking the over 100 million naira ransom. And that story on crowdfunding is also one of our stories this morning. But Daily Trust uh, is talking here. Security agencies infiltrated by fifth columnist. And that's to governor sabotaging prompt response to distress calls. You also have that story. Residents flee 10 Zamfara communities after bandit threats. To the blueprint now. Hmm. As bandits hold on to victims in FCT, 
FG declares ransom payment illegal once against crowdfunding. Attributes Abuja crisis to military operations in northwest and north central. IGP inaugurates special intervention squad for FCT. Mieti Allah sets up 1,144 nomad vigilantes in Nasarawa. A new telegraph kidnapping, crowdfunding for ransom payment unlawful, and that's from the federal government. Uh, you also see there uh, Forex, CBN hires forensic firm to check meat transaction abuse, uh, but you still see Badam Plus, my family has been rendered homeless by former, I think there's an ex governor. The, the former deputy yes, governor deputy of your governor. state. Yes. His house was one of those uh, destroyed Perfect. in the explosion. And uh, staying with the Ibadan explosion, of course, Nigerian Tribune will lead with the Ibadan explosion because it is located in Ibadan. Mm. Victims recount ordeal, 58 houses damaged, foreigners listed as owners of mining company. And you can see the picture story. Yes, you can now see the epicenter. Yes. If you look at that picture story there, you see the epicenter of the blast. The, there's a crater right there in the middle, which tells you exactly where that explosion took place. Look at the houses around it. The houses, uh, like three houses, r those houses right beside the crater, they've gone, they are gone completely. You can't even see the houses anymore. Mm. And then you see the like others. The from Gaza. Yes, looks exactly. Like yeah. that was what I thought when I saw those pictures mm. uh, online y yesterday. Looks like Gaza, mm. just like Gaza. Mm -hmm. All right, let's look at business day. IOC's exit deals to test Tinibu's investment drive. And you also want to look at that story, Nigeria. You know, among top destinations for greenfield project pledges in Africa. But you also want to see federal government orders probing to a bad and explosion. Tinibu commiserates uh, with victims. Let, let's come to our reviewers here. Chooks. I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's still sad days um, ahead for the people of Ibadan. And um, the stories keep coming out that lo lots of more people are perhaps under the rubble till they get them all out. How do you feel about this? I'm very, very, very sad, very distressing. You know, don't forget that Ibadan is the largest city in West Africa. If you paint Ibadan, it will help you. It's a very old town. You know, it's not like Abuja where you have, uh, you know, green areas. You know, uh, Ibadan is very tightly packed. Clustered. Yeah. Clustered, you know. Uh, you know. And if you drive through, if you drive on the world road, if you give you an idea, you drive for like 50 kilometers inside Ibadan, you know, that gives you an idea of how large oh. the city is. So. For it to have happened, and it's very sad because, um, like, uh, like the governor said, you know, the CAC documents, you know, linked the ownership of these companies to foreigners, and um, you know, it's high time we started beaming such light on the activities of this of these people because you can't come to Nigeria to do. So. I mean, how do you start compensating people? You know, such magnitude. You know, is it for the loss of lives, loss of property? Look at my former place of work this day. When, when terrorists um, bombed the place, the, the, the next building is about five or six stories. They can't even occupy because it's, it's, uh, the integrity of the building is uh, compromised. So it's, um, it's a test case for the Tinuba administration, you know, because we have to come down hard on, on, um, on, the, on uh, those who have breached uh, our laws. You know, you don't, you don't, um, you don't handle explosives in a, in a, what do you call it, in a residential areas. Area, yes. Yes. No, it's, it's, um, it's not pardonable, it's not excusable. You know, whoever, everybody involved in that must be brought to account. And that's why, um, because we, we, we don't take the protection of life and property serious. That's why people just, you see, someone has a broken down truck, he leaves the truck, a, an innocent person drives, ramps into the truck and dies and, you know, you know ends there. Because people have to be brought, you know, everywhere else where people are, people are made to account for their actions and inactions. That's how it's rule of law. So you see, and, and I saw a story where we're talking about reviewing our explosive laws. I, I think there are, there are enough laws that talk about um, implementation. Yes, it's it's how to enforce these laws. You know, it takes us to Plateau State, where a very weighty allegation by by Governor Keller moved to and you know, our security agencies to you know accomplice it. Yes. And this is not the first time um, a former chief of army staff, um, General T. White and Juma retired. He once alleged that. Um, that, that was an expose. Yes. yes, you know, for General, for those who know General T. White and Juma, he's a very taciturn person. You know, for him to have said that, and we all know that, having come from the military, you know, he he was duty bound, as it were, to protect his constituents. But he came out to say.
come. We are, we are, we are, you know, we have fifth colonists amongst us. And the same thing, Governor Kelek Buftwang. President Goodluck Jonathan said. said the same thing. Out. If I say he said in his he government. Said in his government. In his government. And even that among those dipping their hands in, um, in a soup bowl with him, you know. So it's, it's very sad because, you see, if we have as Governor Buftwang, you know, alarm, he raised the alarm. You know, we wouldn't say he's also not given to. He's a very measured person, uh, Governor Kelly Mufta. For those who he doesn't play to the gallery, I'm going to have said that because I'm going to have arrived at that conclusion. You know, he's the Chief Security Officer of Plateau State, but I've gone through security briefings and you know testimonies of those who were attacked on Christmas Eve. You uh -huh. know, that response, because see, if you have no, no matter how much, no matter how much you invest in security, you know, if the persons who are tasked to man this um, 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 equipment are not, or uh, you know, are not are complicit. You know, you call them, it's okay, will they come? And they don't come. Look at what happened in the 1980s when uh, Lawrence Aneni was terrorizing Benin City. He was able to do that. You know, at the time, people thought Aneni was invincible mm, because, of the, because of the activities of a certain DSP, Yamo. He was tipping them, he was tipping the, the, the gang off. So, but as soon as IBB asked them, the then IG, my friend Wes Aneni, he ate me and Wes Aneni. You know? I, I remember that headline. Yes. Where so, is Lawrence Aneni? Where is Lawrence Aneni? And, um, you know, apparently, um, Etimiyang knew that his job was on the line. So he had to deploy a, um, an AIG, Chris Omebian, to Benin. And they changed. They had to move people, shuffle people. And that was how, you know, the man who was tipping off and then he was moved from his seat. So I think it's a very big lesson for security agencies. You know, we can't keep having recording decimal every day every day every day it's it's i mean it's very you see if you if you do the same thing and expect to get different results and that's, you, that's the definition of madness yes you 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 you're you a joke and and beyond the expose because you know you've talked about you know several kinds of um, analysis from ty danjima to there have been much more exposés on complicity from security agencies so beyond that what what should be done is it that there is no political will to act simon well, as uh, my friend Chuga said, the problem of this country is the refusal to abide by the rule of law. Any nation where there is no rule of law, forget about it. Because when those who are mandated with the responsibility of securing lives and property of Nigerians don't do their work, then definitely there's a problem. And then why is it that they don't do their job? They don't do their job because they believe they are there to serve their interests. And what is their interest? Pecuniary. They are not interested in the protection of the Nigerian state. They are interested in ensuring that they dip their hand in the security vote and other votes that are common to them so that they will simply maintain their status quo. See, this country has risen to a level of lawlessness even before the emergence of President Bola Tinibu. In the last eight years, We've had a situation where people were appointed into offices for eight years and they did nothing. All we had from the presidency then was muteness. There was nothing. So when there are no consequences for failures, then definitely you are simply encouraging lawlessness. So all what we are having today in this country is because of the past. But I'm very happy that we have a present administration that is out to ensure that things are done right. When it came into power, maybe, uh, I mean, in May uh, last year, I think certain things were done. But honestly, we've seen a kind of a, like a physical attitude on the part of the insecurity. More and more people are abducted. More and more people are, uh, more and more uh, towns and communities have been attacked. So it seems we are now going back to the past. And I think if you need to nip that in the board, there should be consequences for failure. I'm very happy that the president had a meeting with the security chief this week. And he clearly told them that if they cannot tackle insecurity, they should better hands up. Because the truth of the matter is that when you appoint someone and he's not performing, then all you need to do is to bring in your hand. At this level, honestly, many Nigerians are dissatisfied with the security situation. And that goes to the issue of uh, trying to uh, criminalize or saying that if you pay ransom, crowdfunding, 
You see, it's easy for you to say that don't pay ransom. But when it happens to you, you will know the difference. I was actually going to take you because there, Because the truth of the matter... If the security agents are not able yes. to recover the kidnapped member of your family, yes. what are you expected to do? Well, what well, I'm expected to do, I will try to do everything <coughs> in my power to ensure that I recover my kidnapped family. Because one, many Nigeria are losing interest in the Nigerian state, in their capacity to safeguard their life and property. This week, we saw uh, Pantami telling us that his friends had rallied about 50 million naira to ensure the safe release of those five girls. So, for God's sake, are you trying to criminalize someone? A, for, a former minister. A former minister. <laughs> and for God's sake, we're in the modern world. This is 2023. When somebody gives you a 2024. call. 2024. Yeah, I mean, uh, 2024. <laughs> when, when someone gives you a call, the, the, the security are able to know the exact point where that caller is calling from. Why is it that the security cannot do their job? And that, lies, and, and that falls back to the issue of we have rogue elements in the security sector. When there is some kidnapping uh, session in, I think, in uh, uh, Kaduna State, we are hundreds of millions of naira we are being taken as ransom. You find bullion vans belonging to banks going there to collect this ransom. So what happened? Of course. It's true. One of my cousins was kidnapped. She's a little niece of mine, I think. We had to be told to pay money. If you don't pay this money, they will kill her. So the fact of the matter is that government should be told right here that it is, it is not an act of legality for them to criminalize ransom payment. Government has all within its powers to ensure that criminality of all forms are tackled. Okay, so they should not just tell us that uh, uh, if somebody is kidnapped your loved one, don't go and pay no. ransom. It's a lie. Because I will pay. No, 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 no. I think I have a slightly, That's the truth. I have a slightly different. Okay, let, let's hear yours. Yeah. You see, there's no government in the world that publicizes or that gives a green light for people ransom to pay ransom. Payment. Yeah, no. Israel, they pay ransom, but it will not be seen. I mean, they wouldn't paste it. That is our policy. You know. On, you know, you know, for the optics, we say we don't pay ransom, we don't believe that. And that's a normal thing because, you see, it's, we have to be very, very careful here. I had expected the SSS, the SS to, to, to invite Pantami. But Pantami is a professor of uh, cybersecurity. So, because you ask yourself, what did he seek to achieve by going to publicize that his friend brought 15 million? Because, you see, these, uh, these uh, kidnappers don't live in space. Uh -huh. They read mm -hmm. the news. So if somebody, because if I was, if I, if I were a kidnapper and somebody goes to say, oh, that person, a friend pay 50 million, then you get 10 friends to pay 500 million. Because you see, you, you don't, um, you don't encourage them. Because it's about, it's about, um, if you make a crime less attractive. Because if, if they hold, okay, even if they hold um, and their, 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 their victims, you know, for one day, two days, six months, they also will, they will, they will, they will get tired. But they started killing no, their victims. No, that's what I'm saying. So and for that, no, 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 no. But it's, it's, it's the activity because, you see, let's, I mean, let's face it. Human beings, to a large extent, are rational. They brought 30 million. If you, if you read that story, you see that there's more to that story. I mean, people like Pantamir should be questioned. Because, you see, they brought 30 million naira. 30 million naira anywhere in the world is big money. Yeah. They, they retained the money and killed the scale. So what did the kidnappers gain by? Are they going to eat the cops? I mean, they, they, are, so for them to have rejected the 30 million shows that there's an interest group somewhere. Mm. So Ampatami has come to say to full up. Then what did, what did they do? What was the next move? They, they hiked the, the ransom fee to 100 million, 700 million. 700. 700 million. 700. So even if, you, even, if you, even if you kidnapped the relation of the richest man on earth, he will not pay you 700 million. I mean, let's face it. So for them to have rejected 30 million naira shows that there's... And I want to believe that the, the resurgence of kidnapping in FCT is politically motivated. Oh. I want to believe that strongly. Because if you look at 30 million naira, like I said, even Evans would have taken 30 million naira. Even Evans, the kidnapper, would have taken 30 million. So for these guys, because these are ragtag men, for you to have rejected... Look at... I, I watch, watch documentaries on piracy in Somalia, in the Horn of Africa. So the guys who go with skiff boats are not... Because... 
million, because if you see them, five million dollars, you don't even see five thousand dollars, you know, around that, around them. They are, they are, they are, they are errand boys. So for this ring, you know, you kidnap somebody, you kidnap the children. I mean, the man and the children, and you're asking for seven hundred million. Who does that? So for people like Patami to come and beat his chest and say a friend of his, because. That is friend. He's trying to send a message yes. in between the lines. Yes. And that, on. That, that, so, but I mean, I called for his um, 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 invitation. Mm. Because he has to explain why he did that. And that friend who paid 50 million, let us know how much tax he's paid to the Nigerian state. Because he has to, because I mean, this is money laundering. And this is the same person who, because Pantami is a person of interest to the Nigerian government. We knew how the you know, past government protected him, gave him protection. When the same person called for the uh, for killings in when he was a preacher in Bauchistan, and, and what the government said at the time, they said he was uh, he was still a, a babe, he was still suckling breast, he was he was a child, and the same man comes under Tinubu government. And if you if you read what uh, Professor, Professor Wally, Wally Shinka said, it's very interesting that because we all know that Buhari did not support Tinubu, and no. for 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 Wally Shinka, who is not given to I don't talk to say there are plans to annul the selection. So, and Patami was a key player in the immediate past government because the government, the Buhari government, protected Patami. So, from Patami to come to say that his friend, one of his friends, raised 15 million. So, how much did he raise as a as a as a as a patriotic Nigerian, as, as somebody who? You understand? And and still <laughs> and still on this crowdfunding um, issue, you know, they say it's unlawful, it will embolden criminal. But then the question is, what is then to be done? Because yesterday. I happen to be in a virtual platform with several women groups and, you know, families who have lost loved ones yeah. trying to find out ways to help those families. And one of the things they said, well, while we are talking, the National Assembly is on break somewhere in their own safety net. Nobody is being, you know, questioned. They are not even returning to discuss the issues of the country. But beyond that, the question is, if they are not allowed to crowdfund, well, let's say that is technical. What then is the next thing to do? Because whether you like it or not, those people have loved ones, you know, held by this bandit. So, Tricks, I hear you say that yeah. nobody comes out to say, you know, pay ransom. But again, there should be a level of believability that actions are being done. That's why, you know. sorry, so that's why we have to reject our security, our national security. Because, you see, look at all the kidnappings going on in FCT. The CP of police is still in stable, you know, in stable, you know, in his desk. The director of SSS in the state is, um, in FCT is there. Nobody has. Look at, I mean, we're a journalist. Let me use the newsroom as an example. You have somebody who covers education beat, then today he misses a story, to, tomorrow he misses a story. He, he, they, they, they will pull him out of that beat. So I don't know why, you know, even the IG himself, what is he doing? Because you see, you see he came and told us he was uh, as uh, angry as a lion, as a tiger. He wants to show the tiger in him. He's not even showing us the pussycat in him. And the military has said they will yes, end it in 2024. No, no, no. It's, it's, not, see, it's not the role of the military to... For, national security is not the role, I and mean, it's not the responsibility of the military. I mean, let's get that clear. It was <coughs> Hafiz Ringim, as IG of police, who abdicated responsibility after Boko Haram terrorists followed him from Meduguri to bomb. Look at all over the world. When you see cases of hostages everywhere, it's police. So we have to reform Nigerian police force. We have to train them. We have to equip them. It's not about... I mean, if we have war with child or Niger, let's, let's equip soldiers. But for internal security, because you see, okay, let's face it, how many military, how many military barracks do we have in Nigeria vis-a-vis -vis police stations? Police stations are almost, there's no villain that don't have a police post. I mean, let's face it. There was this case of a former, he's, he's late now. He, 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 he was a Mopo commander in Anambra State. You know, his cousin was kidnapped the first time. Second, he, he was the one who negotiated ransom for his cousin. Second, then the cousin was kidnapped. He tried also to negotiate then. You know, the IG at the time said, no, you cannot be a serving police officer and be negotiating with, with, uh, with um, uh, Onovo. Questionable. Yes, he was, he was arrested and brought to Abuja and detained. And from there, of course, he, he died. You know, he wasn't, I mean, he later became sick and died. But the issue is that our law enforcement agents, those who are in charge, should take charge. Mm. It's not enough to, you have, because you have a CP. See, I have a friend who used to be, I mean, who, who's a SARS officer. He tells me that there's no SARS officer who doesn't know the Ambrobas in his vicinity. Because whenever there's a crime, you call, it's everywhere, it's all over the world. You call kingpins, 
You call, you have informants all over the place. Oh boy, who do this thing? Uh, let me, uh, may I ask uh, this guy? May I ask this guy? They Rather than bring them in? No, 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 no. no, Every, they have, no everywhere no, in the world. They have informants. Police, they men, have, police. Yes. Police operatives have informants. They have informants. It's, it's an informal thing. Okay, let me ask you. When IBB, when push came to shove and IBB asked, because it was like um, Anini was having a field day. It was, it was like a spirit. Yes. People said, when, when they mentioned Anini, people would just disappear. You know, people would run. But when IBB held this man to account, say, my friend, where is Anini? In less than two weeks, he was fished out. So imagine had, had IBB continued to drink tea with them, with them. Okay, okay, so let, let, let's look at this court barring NBC story for the yeah, reporting. To look, we need to look at that. Yes, fines on broadcasters. I mean, I come to you, Simon, then yeah. first before I come to Chooks. So how do you look at this? No, very, very wonderful. Because uh, to me, it is... It's always been used as a means to stifle the, the media. Now that the court of law has come to say, no, you don't have that right to ban, I mean, to impose fine. You are not a court of law. You can't do that. Honestly, I was so very, very happy because in our democracy that is devoid of the rule of law, the tendency is for those who are in the corridors of power to use their powers to ensure that they stifle the media, especially the broadcast. Because that broadcast medium, is a medium watched by millions of Nigerians. But on and off. Like on and off. So, honestly, it was something that at a certain time I was so disturbed. But honestly, when I read the verdict yesterday, I was so very, very happy. And I know that the politicians who don't give a damn about Nigeria, they don't give a damn about us. At least they are being called to book. They are being saying, no, you can't do that. You can't have your cake and have it. They give it they use us for elections so and... It is something, and honestly, <laughs> that I'm very, very happy about. And it is something I call on the media to really applause. Because whether we agree, whether we don't agree, is that the broadcast medium has been very, very effective. Not only the broadcast media, but also the print media. Okay. No, I, I, yes. Chooks. Yes. Media I, rights I, agenda. We have to commend media rights agenda. MRA, yes. Yeah, yes, yeah. for taking... For taking the bull by the horn, because it was like, you know, every time, you know, NBC will wield the big stick, you know, and we just cry like babies. You see, the basic ingredient of democracy is freedom of speech. Whenever you stifle free speech, when whenever you stifle free speech, mm. that, that's what you get. And you see, I'm very happy at, with the results of um, the judgment Supreme Court. You see, and the, the judgment of Supreme Court put a lie to what the CJN was saying, that they shouldn't listen to public opinion. Because first of all, what is democracy? Government of the people. Because you see, if you, if you remove the opinion, what is, what is election in the first place? It's public opinion. What's referendum? It's public opinion. Plebiscite, public opinion. When we come here, public opinion. When you, when you write stories, public opinion. When people listen to stories, public opinion. So I don't want to believe that. You see, it's not only in Nigeria. You say politicians don't care, or they, they care. They, they are bound to care. All right, Chris. <laughs> yes, that. Thank, Thank you very you much, much. Jukes. We have to leave it at that <laughs> this morning. So much to talk about, really. Yeah. Um, but uh, time is not very friendly with yeah. us. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Thank you for watching. If you're new to this channel, consider subscribing so you won't miss out any of our latest videos.